Well, hallelujah and praise God. I'm Pastor Jay and this is a devotional time. You know, I just love the scripture in, in Genesis 4 and 9. It, it really explains a lot about, about who I, I feel that I am and, and really how I believe that we as Christians are supposed to be. The Lord asked Cain, says, Cain, where is your brother Abel? And Cain replies, what? Am I my brother's keeper? It, it's just such a wonderful testament to, to even today's society and the Christian life today because so many times people are saying, what? Am I supposed to share the gospel? What? Should I have told that person about Jesus Christ? And the answer is always yes, yes, yes. It is our responsibility, and yes, we are our brother's keeper. I want to talk about that just for a few moments this morning. Before we do, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we love you. We honor you, Father. We thank you so much, Lord God, for saving our lives, those of us who are who are uh, paid for by the blood of the Lamb. And Lord God, I just ask you to give me the strength, Father God, and put people in front of me today, Lord God, that I can share your Son Christ with. And in Jesus' name, Amen and amen. You know, I, I think about an old story I heard about an evangelist who said that, that a, a woman that used to come to, to the services and, and she would always sit in the pew, but she would never get involved with outreaches or anything of that nature. And one day her, her young teenage daughter got old enough that she left home and she was gone. She, she went to a different state, got a job uh, waiting tables and bartending and, and whatnot. And, and that was the life she lived. And, and the woman always held herself accountable for that. And she said, well, maybe I did something wrong. And the fact that the lady came to church all the time, uh, brought her kid to church all the time, but, but always was a pew sitter, never got involved. One day, years later, her daughter calls her and with a glorious uh, voice on the other line says, mom, I got saved. I'm involved in a church up here and it's the most wonderful thing. I'm, I'm, I'm bought by the, by the blood of the lamb. And the mother was so happy. And she said, how this happens? He says, the, the young lady said, well, I was at work. She was bartending and said a, a Gideon had came in to a restaurant to eat and she had came out and waited on his table and he could see in her eyes or see in her ways that there was something that she was struggling with and he shared Christ with her. And lo and behold, she accepted Christ right there. And from that moment on, her life changed. And she calls her mother and says, Mother, I'm saved. You know, the mother had took her to church all those years, sit in those pews all those years, listen to that pastor all those years, listen to maybe that Sunday school teacher all those years, but never got involved with the outreach of spreading the gospel. Well, thank God, as she says, that that Gideon did. You know, I, I think about the, the scripture Ezekiel. And this is something that, that any, any child of God, especially a pastor, but really any child of God needs to remember. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18, it says, When I say unto the wicked, you shall surely die, you realize that we shall surely die, that we are going to die. We are going to die a physical death one day, whether it be in an accident or whether it be uh, by just age, you will die. But see, we have the choice to be born again here in this world. We have the choice to die that death here and spiritually be born again, be reborn. And then when physical death comes, hallelujah to the Lamb, we're with God. But if you do not accept that spiritual rebirth here, when you die that physical death, you will die a spiritual death on judgment day. And it says, you shall surely die. And when you know that someone shall surely die and you do not give him warning, nor speak, nor talk to them about Christ, nor warn them that the wicked from their wicked ways, so you can be part of the saving of their life, the same wicked person shall die in their sin. They shall die in their iniquity and his blood will I require at your hand. This scripture absolutely uh, just, just has such a, a responsibility and authority over my life when I think about this. When, when you know that someone will die, they are unsaved, they are unchurched, and you know that they will die and they will go to hell and you do not speak, and it says, it says that you, it says, in giving him not a warning, nor do you even speak a warning to this person that you know is going to die, God says, I will require their blood at your hand. 
Dear ones, as, as you go off to work or to school or to play this morning, remember this. If you're saved by the blood of the Lamb and you're a child of God, you have a responsibility to get up out of that pew and to let others know about Jesus Christ. Maybe it's a waitress or waiter at your favorite restaurant. Maybe it's that person in the cubicle next door to you at work. But believe you this, by the, by the authority of God's word, if you do not speak a word to this person who is dying in their sin and their iniquity, God says, I will require their blood at your hand. Why, well, hallelujah and praise God. Well, there again, my name is Reverend Jay Warlock, and I'm the pastor at Leonard's Fork Baptist Church. If you do not have a home church, why don't you come out to LFBC? I know that you'll be happy to see what Jesus Christ is doing there. Have a great day. Join us at www.leonardsport.org. Get out there. Tell someone about Jesus Christ today, just like someone told you. And have a blessed day today.